हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर गजेंद्र पुरोहित एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू टॉपिक दैट इज डिस्क्रीट मैथमेटिक्स फ्रॉम अ लॉन्ग टाइम स्टूडेंट्स हैव बीन डिमांडिंग दैट सर यू शुड अपलोड वीडियोस ऑन डिस्क्रीट मैथमेटिक्स सो आई एम स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू अवर व्यू ऑफ डिस्क्रीट मैथमेटिक्स दैट वॉट एक्चुअली इज डिस्क्रीट मैथमेटिक्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सी देर आर टू थिंग्स वन इज कंटिन्यूअस वन इज डिस्क्रीट कंटिन्यूअस मीन्स समथिंग दैट हैपन्स कॉन्स्टेंटली विदाउट एनी गैप्स इन बिटवीन लाइक आई एम गिविंग यू एन इंटरवल i will take an interval 1 and 2 right this is the interval this means each interval from 1 to 2 is covered in this interval okay so this is continuous but instead of this if i will say point between 1 and 2 is 1 by 2 we are not getting anything else is coming means this is set like 1 1 by 2 and 2 apart from that no other point is coming up so this will become discrete clear because no middle point is coming we can understand like this also okay so we'll talk about the subject here discrete means not connected you can see these are not connected here every element is connected right there's an element between 1 and 2 clear means 1.001 will come 1.002 will also come every point will come every point between 1 and 2 that is on real line all of them now when we talk about discrete imagine we have a set where we have 1 1 by 2 2 we don't have elements in between so this is not connected we call this disconnected right See example natural numbers are discrete because one and two is there. Set of integers is discrete because one two minus one zero is there, but elements in between are absent. Like this, the rational number is also disconnected because it doesn't have a rational number. What is discrete mathematics? Discrete mathematics is subject of objects, and we can have objects of any type, right? It can be a e i o u, or we might have element wise. It might be number, or there might be something else as well, right? so ultimately whenever we will talk about discrete mathematics here we talk about finite set now what are advantages of discrete mathematics and why do we study this subject so students this enhances your mathematical thinking and develops it if you want to make a career in computer science then uh, this is a very important subject and it is very useful in coding and also in many subject that we study in computer science it has a lot of applications in that for college going students this is part of syllabus if you are studying engineering if you are studying bsc if you are doing any other course then there is discrete maths like bca mca there is a complete course of discrete mathematics so there are many problems in maths which we can solve with the help of discrete mathematics right now we will move on here we will take examples of what type of problems we can solve like finding the shortest path of two objects and drawing a graph with conditions in graph theory we will learn there then we will learn about logical here logic which we study is also a part of discrete mathematics so this is the syllabus here which i am going to cover in this entire course right i will do one by one lecture and the most special thing about my youtube is that i continue topic wise right now if i have started discrete mathematics then i will cover the whole syllabus see what i am going to cover set function and their relation in this pigeon hole principle will also come this is hash diagram lattice combinatorics here propositional logic finite state machine reference relation and generating function is here graph theory students i will be covering all these topics here so let's start this now we will talk about sets and sets has very simple definition which we learned in 11th grade i have uploaded a video on youtube about this you can check it on itab now see what is it the set is a collection of well defined objects it is known as a set like students if i ask you you know what are the vowels in the alphabet you have then you know what they are right is this clear to all of you if i ask you what will be even number from 1 to 100 what will be odd number in this what's their set what are prime numbers numbers divisible by 3 so these are all well defined object so collection of all of these will be what it will be the set now if i ask you that which is the most fearsome creature for you if you ask what will be its set then students every man has different fear of animals some people are afraid of cockroaches some are afraid of lion and some are afraid of goats fear in each case is different so there the object we have it won't be well defined therefore that collection will not be a set okay guys If I ask you what's your favorite book, right? Then everyone have their own favorite book. Someone likes a certain type of book. Someone likes a certain type of book. So that's not a well-defined object either. Therefore, that collection that we have will not be a set. Now, if we have set, first we will discuss the types of sets. First, we will discuss about empty set. What is an empty set? A set having no elements is called an empty set. It means that there is no element present in it. So 
you know what do we have it's an empty set right if i tell you that empty set like if I ask you guys in between 10 and 100, which is the even number that is prime number also. So students, there is no even number between 10 and 100, which is even and also prime. So the set which will be formed will be an empty set. Is this clear or not? You need to pay attention. Okay. So empty set means there is nothing there. Keep this in mind. Now singleton set. A set having only one element is called a singleton set. If I ask you guys, tell me the number between 1 to 100 that is even and also prime. So answer will be 2, right, which is also even and also prime. So the set of this will be what? We will have this as a singleton set, right? Now let's talk about subsets. What is a subset? Next, we'll talk about subsets. What is subset? So a set is called subset of B if X belong to A. Then implies X belongs to B. It is expressed as A is subset of B. Means there is a larger set and there is a subset of it which is smaller set. For example, like here, let's suppose we have set given as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's say we have a set. Now I will ask everyone to pick a subset of it, which is its odd number. So what will be the set of odd numbers? So here we will get 1, 3 will come, 5 will come. So here students, you can see that the A that is here, oh sorry, the B that we have is containing in A. It means it is completely going in this. Is this clear or not? So students, it basically means that here B will become a subset of A, okay? Like here B set is given A, E, I, O, U and this we have is A, E, I. So this A is contained inside B. Getting my point? So this is subset of it. Now what is the power set? If we have any set given to us, right? Family of all subsets of set A is called a power set of A, right? So what is a power set? Let's say we have a set. I will take a set in front of UX. The elements in these are 1, 2 and 3. What can be the subsets of this set? So one will be the empty set which will have no elements. Another one will be the set that contains one element. Second will be that has only one element, two. Third will be this. This is its subset, this is its subset, this is its subset. This can be one, three, right? Or take one, two first, right? What we will take one, two and we have one, three here, okay? Or else we have a two, three, right? Or else it is complete one, two, three, right? This is all possible subset we have. Here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and finally 8 okay so in total we will have 8 subsets so all the sets we have if we take collection of them like I will take the collection this 5 then I will take 1 here then I will take 2 then we'll take 3 here right then we'll take 1 2 then we'll take 1 3 here right so students what we will do here with all the subsets we have take the collection of it right then it will come 1 2 3 so all the subsets that we have we have taken collection of all of them so this set that you see, this is what we call a power set of X, right? In other words, the collection of all subsets of a set is called as the power set, okay? How many elements will be in the power set now? So the way to do this is that the elements we have, we have 3 so raised to the power of 3. So there will be 8 elements if you count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8, right? So you can define power set in this way, right? So collection of all subsets of particular set is known as a power set. Getting my point, let's move on, students. Here are some concepts, fundamental operations that happen when we talk about sets, if we have two numbers. So between two numbers, addition happens, multiplication happens, division happens, subtraction happens. We know this. But which operation happens between the sets? There is no addition, subtraction, division that happens here. Here we have union, intersection, Cartesian product, difference, right? This is what it is. How to do this? I want to explain this. We will study these, but I will quickly give overview because question comes in exam. Let's say we have a set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or students, let's suppose that we have a set given as B which contains 3, 4 and 6. Let's say we have A and B all of these. Okay. If you want to find its intersection and first of all, we will talk about union. So union means what will be total of both? What will be some of both of these? So in that case, 1 is coming, 2 is also coming, 3 is coming, 4 is also coming, 5 is also coming and 6 is also coming, right? If you combine both of them, we don't have to repeat the element like if it's 3, 3, 2 times, then write it twice. No, just write it once. This is union. What does union mean? X such that X belongs to A or X belongs to B. Whatever element we have, it should either be in A or in B, right? Here it's coming in both, so we will write it only once. Okay, now we will talk about intersection. So intersection means common elements in both. What is common element? 3 and 4. So what do we have here? The intersection of this x such that x belongs to a and x belongs to b right so listen either x should be in a and x should be in b right it should be in both means x should be in a and also in b 
or is coming in middle. Three and four will come. Now we will talk about difference A minus B. So remove elements of B from this A, right? From A remove elements of B. Elements of B are three and four remove this. Then what's left? One, two and five, right? So what will we get here? A minus B. This is happening, right? X such that X belongs to A and X is not belongs to B. So if we remove all the elements that are of B from A, then what we will get? Difference, right? And this is what we have. Now let's talk about the Cartesian product. If we have two sets, how to find their cross product? What is the way to calculate the cross product? Multiply them. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now how to multiply? Students, please pay attention. Please understand it carefully. You have to understand what I am trying to say. So how do you get its Cartesian product? The first element will go first. So it will be 1, 3, right? First 1, 3, then it will be 1, 4, then it will be 1, 6. Is this clear or not? Then it will be of 2, okay? Here 2, 3, here 2, 4, here 2, 5, right? Oh, sorry, 2, 6, right? So then here we will have 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 6, right? Is this clear to all of you or not, okay? Now like this here we will have 4, 3, right? Here 4, 3, here 4, 4 and here 4, 6 will be here, right? Clear? Now if we will talk about 5, so in the same way, 5, 3, right? 5, 3, 5, 4 and 5, 6. So this is called the Cartesian product, like we have these two. How to do the Cartesian product of these two? Listen, now the first one with first. So the first with first. So here 1, 3 will come. The first one with first, then first with second. So it's 1, 3, 1, 4, then 2, 3 and 2, 4. We write it like this and this is known as Cartesian product of two sets. Let's take question which came in exam. These questions have came in exam. Now sometimes we are asked to prove like this. We have A here, B is here and C is here. Question is to find the value of this. A cross B intersection, A cross C, right? Now students, we have A here and we have B here. So first of all, find value of A cross B, okay? So this one will be what? 1, 4, right? So the first will go with the first, then we will have 1, 5. Then the first one will go with the second. Then here this will be 4, 4 and 4, 5, right? This will be A cross B. Now we will discuss about A cross C, right? Yes, A cross C, so A cross C will be what? So students here, this will be 1, 5, right? 1, 7, right? See here, 1, 5 will come. 1, 7 will come here, right? And next we will have 4, 5, right? And here 4, 7 will come. Now it is asking intersection from these. Now what is this asking? A cross B. Here intersection A cross C, it is asking here what it is asking. A cross C, is it clear? This will come to us A cross C. So what is the common element in both of them? So we have 1, 5 common. So this is coming. This will come here. 1, 5. Next that is coming here. 1, 7. Is not coming. 4, 5. Yes. 4, 5 is coming here. Right. We will get this. Rest nothing. Now this will be what? It will go in intersection. Like this we solve these types of question very easily. Let's take some questions. Sometimes in exam questions of proof is asked. And students get very confused with these questions. Okay. So you can easily do this. What it is saying is, let A, B, C, B, any three sets, then prove that this is equal to this. So listen from here, what do we do? We take the elements, let's say we take this, like let x, comma y, belong to, this is what we have, A cross B intersection C, it means this element we took from here, clear, after belong to, this whole. It means that the first one will be, it means that x belongs to A, and y belong to, what will it be? This will be B intersection C, right? Now, look here, x belongs to A, right? And these two are going to the intersection, right? This means that y belongs to B and y belongs to, what will it be? It will be C. Tell me, are you getting it? Now, we have to prove that this is equal to this. Now, see in this, I can write it like this, that x belongs to A, right? And y belongs to B, right? So, I can write this as x belongs to A and here y belongs to B and I can write this as x belongs to A and y belongs to C. I can write this like this, okay? We can write it like this here. We will do this like, ultimately what we have to do is when we will talk about this. So here we will write this like this, right? I am writing it like this and I am writing this like this, clear? So you can see what it means is this, what will happen is this x comma. Y will go from where? From A cross B, it is going right. Now students, you can see that. Where will the x comma y go? So this will go to A cross B, right? Now what will happen with and? Here is x comma y. Where will this go? This will go with A cross C. Okay? 
Now students, this x comma y is going in a cross B as well as in a cross C. So what does this mean? x comma y will also go in its intersection. So this will be the intersection A cross C, right? So this means that we have taken an element from here and brought it here. So this means that this will do what inside this? It will contain, so what does this mean? Listen here. This basically means that A cross B intersection will contain in A cross B, okay? So it will be intersection A cross C, that's it. Now we need to see that this is containing in this. Now we will take one element from here and put it in this. So this will be contained inside this and these two will be what in this case? Equal. So we are doing the same thing. Now what we will do next? I will change the color a bit, right? Now I will take this. What did I took? X comma Y belongs to A cross. What is this here? It is B. I have taken this, okay? Intersection, what is coming here? Sorry, here is intersection. So students, this will be intersection. Here will be intersection and here will be A cross A, okay? Now this means that first element is coming from first and second is coming from second. Also, it basically means that this X comma Y is going in this and this in intersection. So this X comma Y belongs to A cross B, okay guys? And X comma Y that we have, it will go in. A cross C, it means that it belongs to both of them. It belongs to this and this one also. So students, if this belongs in these, so this means it will be X belongs to A and Y belongs to B because this is Cartesian product. So we can write like this. And what will be here? You can see X belongs A is coming here and Y belongs to C is coming in this. Now you can see that X is coming in A as well as in A here. Like this Y is coming in B and here Y is coming in C also. So what we will do here? If you see, then X is coming in both of these. I can write this as X belongs to A. And what's coming here? Y belongs to B and Y belongs to C is coming. So this means Y is coming in intersection of both. So I can write it like this. Y belongs to B intersection C. So we are taking it as X belong this. This means that the X comma Y that we have, it will go in A cross B intersection C. Okay. Meaning the element will be this. So we took an element from here and brought it into this. What does this mean? It simply means that A cross B intersection a cross C that is coming here is containing, but it is containing inside what? A cross B intersection C. So what did we do? First, we contend this within this. Now we have contend this within this. So that means both of them become what? Equal to each other. And this is what I proved here, right? If you understand this proof, then I definitely tried to prove the same thing here. You can see it here, right? Let's take next question. And in this, we are going to do same thing. Next question is asking that if A, B, C, D are four sets, then prove that this is equal to this. So let's take them here. So here we will take X comma Y belongs to A intersection B, right? Cross, we will take C intersection D. Is this clear to all of you or not? Okay, let's move ahead. If this is cross, then this first element goes to first, second element goes to the second. This means that X belongs to A intersection B and Y belongs to C intersection D. That's it. Tell me. Is it clear? You need to pay attention to this. Okay. Now, since X is going to the intersection of both, so students, it means that X will go to A and X will also go to B. Are you understanding this or not? It's going in intersection. Okay. And what will come here? Why? It will go in C as well. And why? It will go in D as well. Okay. You need to understand this. Clear? If you understand these things, question will be clear to you. Now, we are seeing here that X is also going in A, right? Now, if you see here, then students here, if we take Y, if you take this, then X is going in A and Y is going in C. So I can write this as X comma Y. Here, this A cross will go in C. If we write it like this, now like this and here you can see that this X is going in B and Y is going in B. So here we can write it like this. Now, X comma Y, what we will get here, it will go in B cross D. We can write like this, okay? So you can see X comma Y is going in this and also in this. So it will go in intersection of both. So X comma Y that we have, it will belong to A into C intersection, B into D. If you remember, this is what we had to prove. Is this clear? So in this way, we can easily prove this. Now what we did here, took one element and we brought it in this. So this means here A intersection B into here will be C intersection D. Contains A into C intersection, contains B into D. Okay, is this clear or not? We take reverse, what we do in reverse? Now students, you can see, one element is in this, right? I will make it contain, so that this is also in this, so this will get contained. 
So we are going to do same thing. What we will do? Listen, let x comma y belongs to. I have taken a cross C. Intersection B cross D. Here is x comma y. Here is intersection. So this will be different for both. So this simply means that this x comma y will belong in A cross C and x comma y will belong inside B cross D, right? Since it is intersection here in this, therefore this will go in both. So students, that simply means that x is going to A and y is going to C. Sorry. Here first will go in first. In Cartesian product, first goes with first and second goes with second. Students, what will be here? X belongs to B and y belongs to D will come here. Clear? Now students, you can see x is going in A. X is also going in B. So this means x will go in intersection of this. It is clear. Y is going to C and also going to D. So listen, what will come here? Y will go in intersection of these two clear. Here the x is taken out and then x and y goes into Cartesian product of these two. So the first one will be with first. So first belongs to. What will come here? Listen, A intersection B, right? Into this will come C intersection D, right? We have proved here that one element we are taking and it has come inside this. So this is, so it is containing. What does this mean? If I imply this, then students here it means that this A cross C is, is the intersection of B cross D. Okay, now it is containing, but it is being contained in which? Inside this, right? So here is A intersection B. Is this clear? It contains A intersection B, right? Cross C intersection B. It contains in this, right? If this is contained inside this and this is contained inside this, so this means these two will be what? So they will become equal. You can very easily prove this. I have explained this here as well. You can easily understand this. Clear. So next question. Very good question. What's the question saying? It's saying that A and B are any two sets. Then prove that A intersection B minus A is equal to phi. So here also we will do the same. We will take one element, right? So students, here I took X belongs to A intersection B minus A, okay? Yes, I took this. Now students, I want to tell you that if X is an intersection of this, so X will come A, what will come here? And X will come in B minus A, okay? So when x is coming in B minus A, what does this mean here? So this element x, listen here, pay attention, x belongs to A. So students, this simply means that here this x will go in B. But here I will write, but x does not belong to A, right? So whenever this happens, when an element is going in B minus A, so x should be where? It should be in B, but not in A. Because whenever we calculate the difference, I told you earlier about this, right? That let's say in B, element 1, 4, 6 are given, right? And inside A, we have the element 4. If I ask you to find B minus A, what will you do? You will remove this 4. Here 1 and 6 will come. So this will be for basically whatever elements we have in B. Remember, they should not be in A. So while finding difference if elements are there, they should be in B, but not in A. You have to keep this in mind. That's what we are going to do. Now you see, listen, X is going to A. But students, x does not belongs to A. This is not possible that x belongs to A and x does not belongs to A. It is not possible that x is going in A and not going in A. So this means x will go in empty set. No element is like this. What does this mean here? x belongs to what? It will be empty and b belongs to what will it be? Sorry. Now and. Now what we will get here? x belongs to b. Is this clear? If x is also going to phi x is also going to be, it will go to their intersection, right? What does that mean? This x belongs to phi intersection B. And we know that phi is an empty set and its intersection is with B. So it will be an empty set, getting my point. So this means where will x go? It will go to empty set. It will go there and there is nothing in empty. So what will be value of this? It started from here and went here. This means this will contain an empty if it gets contained in empty set, so this will simply mean it is empty set. We can very easily prove it like this. So thank you so much. This is first lecture of discrete mathematics. Did you like it? Next, I will discuss relations and functions with you and many concepts. I am going to bring it to you. So stay tuned and I have uploaded many more videos like group theory, linear algebra and real analysis. You can check them out here. This is my new channel where I am uploading videos for IIT JAM CSIR net gate exam. How should you prepare for these exams? You can go here and check it out. You can go here and subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching me. Like this, share this and please subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. Let's talk about it. Thank you. Bye-bye.